Many people have an idea of how they would like to be seen. And I have, my job is to try to please them, but not extend a lie. So what I try to do is understand the person. Where do they come from? Uh, do they have kids? Are they married? What's their world like? And that's where the honest answers come from as far as I'm concerned. There were many people who had a great influence on me. One was Elizabeth Taylor. She gave me an opportunity to photograph celebrities. She had said she would talk to the magazine, but no photographs. So what I did was at the end of this interview, I came up to her and uh, frankly I said, Elizabeth, my name is Douglas Kirkland. I'm new with this magazine. Could you imagine what it would mean to me if you gave me an opportunity to photograph you? And she thought for a moment, then she said, come on tomorrow night at 8.30. Elizabeth was very important, exceedingly important, but Judy Garland was too, and I ended up traveling with her for a month, photographed her with uh, Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra, and then there were people like uh, Marlene Dietrich, I photographed, and, uh, and then here we were with, with uh, Marilyn. People generally want to know what was Marilyn really like. And uh, I can only tell you there were many Marilyns. The first time she was very playful, very girl next door. Uh, the first time we had discussed what would we, we would do, at the end of that first session she said, I know what we need. We need a white silk sheet and Dom Perignon champagne, Frank Sinatra records, and I will do the rest in the bed. And then the next figure was the one that we had the night uh, we actually did the session. It was almost like an illusion. Marilyn stepped through, but she didn't seem to even walk. She almost floated in slow motion. And she was very luminous, very white, but she seemed to just be huge and, and more like the cinema screen. The session had gone from about 9.30 to 1 in the morning, and it was very hot. I mean, we had a true connection, and it was very sexual. And she made very sub specific suggestions of things we might do. But you know what I did? Being a kid from a small town, I just kept looking into my camera and taking pictures and acting like I didn't really know what she meant. But you know, that sexuality was what went into our pictures. And it was unfulfilled in any other way, but there was a desire. And uh, that's, that was the success of that shoot, I believe. And yet, the next day when I went there, uh, the third time, uh, to see her was to show her the pictures. There was something wrong, there was something sad. Then she found that principal woman where she's sitting, lying horizontally on the, on the bed and squeezing the pillow. You're looking right down on her from up, up above. And uh, she fell in love with that picture. She spoke about it in the third person. She said, that girl, that girl is the kind of a girl that any man would like to be in that bed with. I was in Paris working with Coco Chanel and um, I saw headlines in the paper, Marilyn A. Mort. The shock still goes through me, learning that. And you know, one of the strange things I thought, and I'm being very honest with you now, is I thought, but Marilyn, we had another date together. We were gonna do more, but Marilyn was gone. That was the end of Marilyn Monroe. And you know, truthfully, uh, in that few days I had between the time I met her and my photo session, I said to myself in the late nights that I couldn't sleep, have I oversold myself? Am I not gonna make it through this? Well, I did and uh, the evidence is, is, is in the pictures all these years later.